I want to welcome you to the Changemaker Sessions. Uh, tonight, our workshop is Refuge in Challenging Times, the Three Levels of Trust. And I just want to welcome all of you sweet souls here who are here live, and then all of you sweet, wonderful people who are watching the replay. Um, it's really great to spend time with you either in this moment or in the future. Um, I'm Kimberly Carroll and I am a coach for change makers. So I help those who are trying to make a difference in this aching world of ours uh, with the inner work, the high performance habits and the strategies basically to make you unstoppable. Um, and tonight, uh, I, I really want to explore what I call the three levels of trust that you can turn to in times of challenge um, for both refuge, you know, just to kind of have, have a port in the storm um, or, uh, you know, for strength, you know, to be able to get you up on your feet and charging forward if, if that's what um, the situation is calling for. And I see a really nice mix of people from uh, sort of different social justice realms tonight. I love that. I love how we can come here as uh, fellow change makers in our different areas and uh, and be with each other and learn um, from each other. So uh, let's see here. OK, I want to just make a note that you're going to need some pen and paper. For tonight. So if you don't have pen and paper nearby, make sure you grab some. Um, we, you know, this isn't a listen shop. This is a workshop. We're going to be doing some, some good work tonight. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to go through some exercises to help you cultivate these inner and outer safety nets that we're going to talk to. And my goal is to be able to get you into more of a state of ease and more of a state of true courage, both in your mission, your, your work, uh, your change making, and just your life in general. Um, so this is the conundrum. Let me lay it out for you. As change makers, uh, you know, being an activist or an engaged citizen, we're kind of taught, you know, don't trust what you're told. Always be questioning. Always, you know, like, don't trust too easily. But on the other hand, being a change maker requires a real deep degree of trust. If you want to be effective as a change maker, you've got to regularly take some risks for what you believe in. And if you don't have that inherent trust that you'll be all right, you're a lot less likely to take those risks or you're taking them for the wrong reasons. Um, now, if we're talking about, um, you know, in order to be an enduring change maker in this world. So those are the two pieces that I'm, I'm really concerned with as change makers is that you be effective and that you be enduring, that you don't burn out like, like that. Um, so in order to be an enduring change maker in this world, yet we have to do the work, but we also need to have a degree of surrender around the outcomes. Okay, folks, change is slow. And when we're not getting the results we wish for, um, if we're if we are not if we don't have a degree of surrender around that, we will go bonkers. Okay, and so we need to learn to have that sense of surrender. Um, and for a lot of people that I know, surrender is a it's a dirty word. It's a hard thing to even contemplate. I know it was for me for many years. Um, and so. I just want to make it clear before we go any further, though, when I say, um, you know, having trust that everything will be all right, I'm not meaning that everything's going to be rosy. Everything's going to work out the way you want it in the time you want it. I'm talking about knowing that you'll be all right, no matter what happens, because you will have the resources to deal with. Okay. It's not a guarantee that it's all going to work out. It's not that whole, I trust that the universe will supply, you know, will provide. Um, it's, it's the, it's, it's having the trust that you have the inner and outer resources to be able to weather whatever storm comes your way. And that to me is one of the most valuable things a person can have. So, so when people say, oh, you got to you got to just have a leap of faith, take that risk, or you've just got to surrender, you got to trust. I mean, I know for me and a lot of people, the initial question is trust in what? 
What if you don't believe that there is anything to catch you when you're falling rapidly towards this abyss? Or what if you don't trust that there is something to hold you when you take a risk that could obliterate you in some way? If you don't have a strong source of trust, folks, you'll be too scared to take the important risks and you're certainly never gonna be able to have a sense of surrender in your being. What's gonna happen is you're gonna be always holding on for dear life. Okay, now how does holding on for dear life actually look? I mean, sometimes it does look like this. Sometimes when I'm having a, you know, sort of an anxious time, I will literally look at my, my fists and they're all balled up. And sometimes it's just a matter of going, And this is, you know, opening up to what there is to trust, okay, which we're going to get into for a second. Um, so if you don't have a strong sense source of trust, some of the patterns that come up are trying to control things um, that is through various patterns like perfectionism, constant worrying, overworking. It's just like, oh, if I just work hard enough, I can control this. If I just pin it down and get it perfect. You know, if I just control everybody and everything that's happening around me, it'll be okay. You can never do that, folks, okay? That's never gonna be within your capacity. So trying to white knuckle through your days isn't going to um, take care of everything. And in fact, um, it can eventually exhaust you. Okay, when you are just always tenuously keeping that train barely on track and it just through sheer force, it's exhausting. Can, can anybody relate to that? Just the exhaustion of, of trying to control everything, but it also constricts your creativity, your connection, even your compassion. Three of the biggest powers that I think we need to have as change makers, creativity, connection, and compassion. And when you're white knuckling, you squeeze all of that out of your being, basically. So some of you might be thinking like I did when I was younger, but I do take risks. I take a lot of risks. Now, I want to get clear on what risks are. Okay. A lot of people think risks mean doing something big and bold, being strong, um, and being warrior-like. But for you, taking a risk, that might be easy. That was pretty easy for me, actually. But you know what was a risk? Being vulnerable. Opening up to absorb love, you know, people's help. That's what was a risk for me. I, I was not a risk I was willing to take. Um, another big risk for some people, a lot bigger than, you know, walking into the fire is saying no. Saying no to something in order to have space to honor yourself. How scary can it be to say no to things? All the fears that come up, I'm going to be a bad person. I'm not going to be worthy. They're not going to love me anymore. They're not going to want to be in relationship with me anymore. Scary stuff. I mean, hey, the walking to the fire is scary. I'm not, I'm, I'm not like I, that is also a form of fear. Like a lot of people have a huge fear of, of doing some of the dangerous things like, you know, the doing a protest that could break the law, things like that. So I'm talking about what feels risky for you. And just, you know, in order to have sort of a focal point tonight to kind of weigh out these areas of trust, I'm going to get everybody to think about a risk that, you know, a risk that you're pretty afraid to take. It may be one that you take once in a while, but, or it may be one that you've never been able to take, but a risk that, you know, is, is hard for you. Okay. A risk that, um, you wish you could take, but you can't. And we're going to just choose one tonight to work off of, to keep kind of going back to. Um, hmm. I'm personally going to work with the risk of letting go of some of the doing. Okay. That's a big, that's a risk that I have a hard time with. And it's something that I need to do in order to sort of get to this next level of my own 
expansiveness, my own creativity, my own connection, my own inspiration. What is the risk that you're afraid to take? And I want you to write it down. Okay, I want you to make this real official. And I'd love for you, um, if you care, if you care to share, um, and again, I'm not going to use names out loud uh, right here in the from the chat, but um, I'd love for you to share if you don't mind. Uh, you don't have to, but uh, I'd really love to sort of know what we're working with so I can kind of refer back to some things. I can maybe help you a little bit. Um, what, where are you afraid of of uh, you know, it doesn't, and it doesn't just have to be a risk. It can be where, where's the fear for you? You know, maybe there's, there's just a fear of, um, of, of dealing with death, thinking about death. Um, maybe there's a fear of, of, of taking, you know, declaring yourself as, as, as doing a particular project. Maybe it's a fear of standing up to somebody. Um, maybe it's a fear of, of letting go of something. So I'm seeing making mistakes. Yeah. Fear of making mistakes will paralyze us. Another one I'm seeing is risk of doing an action that would cost me my partner, my best friend, and therefore my life. And so that's, there's the story that goes along with it. Okay. That, that parentheses and therefore my life is, is the story you know, um, the story of the abyss. Um, so thank you for that. I'm, I'm seeing fear of the declaration of my expertise. Yes. Standing in your worth, standing in your strength. Um, I'm seeing, I'm doing a criminal clinic next term where I'll shadow a lawyer or a judge and I'm scared of screwing it up or being weird. <laughs> so, you know, taking the risk to be yourself. It can be a huge one. Huge one. Thank you so much. Fear of believing in myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you might want to dig a, even a little bit deeper into that. Um, if you believed in yourself, what are you most afraid might happen? Because that might get you even into a deeper fear. What's, what's, what do you fear would happen if you believed in yourself? And another one is, yeah, fear of failure. Okay, fear of, and failure can mean a lot of things. Um, failure can mean looking stupid. Fear can mean losing somebody. Fear can mean, um, you know, uh, losing uh, something, you know, uh, status, money, whatever it is. I'm seeing fear of disagreeing or standing up to a loved one. Yes. Don't, there's the trust around that is missing. Okay, the tr trust around all of these is missing. And so we need to figure out what the piece is. Where, you know, there's three levels of trust we're going to talk about. And I'm going to guess that you have a degree of one, two, or all of these. But one, two, or all of them need to be strengthened. Okay. And so tonight we're really going to work on um, being able to uh, cultivate. I'm going to give you practical tools and exercises for cultivating these different levels of fear as you sort of identify them. You're going to go, oh yeah, second level of trust. That's the one. That's the one. Um, another one that came up, being misunderstood. I, and that's one that really hits for me too. The, the powerlessness of being misunderstood is very scary for me. So thank you for sharing. That. Okay. So now that you know the risk that you're working with, that we're all working with tonight, because I'm going to be working with you on it, um, I want to tell you about these three levels. And I'm going to take you through and it sort of explain the three levels. And then we're going to go back and we're going to do some exercises around each of these levels. But I want to give you sort of the lay of the land, first of all. So these three levels of trust are about giving you backup in life, the backup that you need to do scary things, okay? Um, they're the aspects that I believe we need to cultivate in order to start letting go of fear and all the patterns that we hang on to to control or avoid fear. Can you imagine if all of the energy that you spend trying to avoid fear and control things, if you were able to let that go, how much energy that would free up? <laughs> amazing superpower um 
So, okay. So the three levels of trust that, and again, folks, these are mine. This is how I frame, um, you know, there are all, all, all sorts of traditions of refuge. Um, I really love the, the, uh, the three refuges in Buddhism, which are the Buddha, the Sangha and the Dharma, which, you know, are sort of, uh, well, I won't go into explaining them, but they're about truth. Uh, they're about um, support. And um, but so, you know, um, my levels are a little bit different, but they certainly all kind of play into each other. Um, so my three levels of trust include uh, real world safety nets, first level of trust, second level of trust, self relationship, and third level of trust is trust connection to your universal nature. So I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on each of these. And um, uh, like, again, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat, but I will open it up to questions at some point if you want something in particular um, uh, explained or something, you know, uh, explained in, in, um, in relation to you. All right. So let's just talk about um, the real world safety nets. And I'm going to, I kind of think about the levels of trust as, as sort of the most obvious to the most esoteric, okay, and sometimes the easiest to the hardest, but it's not always that way. And and, and you'll kind of see as, you, as we go through it, oh, no, that I, I have that level of trust. That's really strong for me. Um, okay, so um, real world safety nets. This level includes feeling into the practical supports the strengths and resources that you have in this life and in this situation in particular that you have fear around, okay? Now, um, these are, are sometimes um, pieces that we forget um, or that we just don't call on enough, or they may be pieces that you're going to need to cultivate more of. Okay, so um, the real world safety nets include, for example, um, beings that we have in our life, our friends or our family, including our fur family, our communities that bring us strength or soothing or backup. Okay, they also include um, societal uh, resources or safety nets that we can call on. That can be anything from a podcast that inspires you or government financial safety nets or a big contact list that you can um, reach out to if need be. It also includes the strengths that you have to fall back on, okay, the qualities that you have to fall back on. So you could be a really pro um, powerful problem solver. Um, you might be able to really adapt well. Um, maybe people really seem to like you and want to help you. Maybe it's passion, this passion that just energizes you, okay, that just sort of ascends everything else. The other um, aspect of the real world safety nets is past experiences, okay? Surviving and even thriving in past challenges, Okay, being able to recall that, being able to recall when you thought a task was insurmountable, but you did it. What trust that brings, trust in yourself, your own capacity, or that time when you failed miserably, but you learned such a good, valuable lesson. What a sense, a point of trust for being able to fall on your face a few more times. So what these real world safety nets do is they can remind you that you have what it takes if something were to go south. It makes you not so afraid of failing or scary situations, which generally makes you more brave. So you may already have some of these areas, you may have them in spades, but it's about being able to take stock of them and remembering them on a regular basis. Oh yes, I have survived and thrived so many times when I thought it was the end or when I thought I was down for the count. Um, or it may be a matter of, of learning to cultivate some of these things. So we're gonna come back to this in a minute. Um, because I, I think it's important for us to take real stock of this. So folks, the second level of trust, and we're getting into sort of more potent, deeper levels, is 
trust via the relationship with yourself. I especially love this one because it changed my life. It changed my level of fear. Uh, it made me a very brave person. And it's the idea that you are the only person that is guaranteed to be with you from this first, from the first breath to your last. What if that person, what if you had a regular loving connection with that being yourself? What if that person could actually be your own best ally? That no matter what happens, you're always able to come home to yourself. You're always able to find a soft landing there. Like I said, this made, made a huge difference for me. Um, I, when I was younger, I was, was extremely hard on myself. I thought that the only way to, for me to get better and to be acceptable in this world was to be mean to myself, you know, to always be critiquing myself at every turn to just be like, wow, you know, like, couldn't you have done better there? Or you really screwed that up or, or, you know, you get it together, control it, come on. Um, and I, you know, that's, that's how I talk to myself. Sometimes even worse, like what kind of fucking idiot are you? They would get that bad. Okay. And I just want you to imagine if you had a child that you were responsible for. Okay. Small child. And you were talking to them at every turn. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, why are you looking so fat today? You know, what are you just like a, a real wuss? Why couldn't you go through with that? You never carry through with anything that you commit to that child would get all of a sudden brave and want to take on the world? No, they'd want to curl up in the fetal position and rock back and forth, okay? And that's what having a self-relationship with yourself is like when you're just being a taskmaster, when you're just being a critiquer, or even worse, not even having a relationship with yourself, okay? Not even like checking in to see how are you feeling? You're not even feeling into your body to know what's going on. Oh my God, there's there's like, there's like a nudging coming from inside of me. Something's telling me to pay attention. You know, that only person guaranteed to be with you from first to last breath. The only person that you can completely know inside and out. And you don't have a deep relationship with them. Woo! That is such a missed opportunity. That is such potential for deep and loving trust. So, um, you know, what this has done, so through my own cultivating of uh, more understanding for myself, more nurturing for myself, more of an intimate relationship with myself, um, I, I was a, I've been able to really sort of, it's given me the sense that no matter what happens in my life, I've got. I've got a loving place to come home to. Okay. And that doesn't mean I coddle myself. That doesn't mean that when I do something really out of my integrity, like really shitty, I, I say, it's okay. You're the best. No, I'm, I act like a, a loving parent to myself. I say, okay, first darling, let me love you. And then let's figure out what went wrong. Okay, I talked to I talked to myself like, what was scaring you so much that you would do that? That you would step out of your integrity like that? What was hurting you so much? And then I listen, and then I I and then I like I have whether I write it or I have this internal dialogue, I I listen and I and I try to try to soothe or I try to show this this scared vulnerable part of myself, you know, the more expansive way, the truth. Okay. That's what a loving parent does. And sometimes um, as my own best ally or my loving, you know, my own loving parent, I'm, I'm also like a champion for myself. I'm like, you have, you've forgotten what you've got going on. Get out there, kick some ass lady. Okay. It's going to look very different in different situations and for different people. Um, but generally what this does is it, guarantees that even when the whole world is against you, even when you screw up, you're going to have a place to come home and to recover.
okay, to, to take responsibility, to be soothed, um, to, um, you know, feel safer again, so that you can get out there and do what is needed. And again, this level um, is cultivated through self exploration, through self appreciation, through self love, and through self care work. So we're going to come back to that in a minute. And we're going to do a couple of exercises around it. So as I'm talking about these levels, I, I do want you to kind of be aware of like, okay, which level here is really strong for me? Which one is a little bit lacking? Um, uh, I'll tell you the sort of own, my own story of, of the levels and my relationship with them in just a second. But let's go to the tr level three, trust level three. And this one is the more esoteric one. So it's a little harder for some people. It's very natural. It's, it's actually the strongest and easiest um, level of, of, of trust. But for me, it was a little bit harder. Um, and actually level two is even harder, um, but it's such an important piece. And that is remembering your connection to the larger part of your being. Okay. The part that is part of everybody and everything, part that is infinite, eternal, the part of you that is this nature, this energy, this allness. Now, what this connection, what this sort of trust level does when, when this is, is strong is it, um, it makes you feel that no matter what happens, you're going to be okay, even in death. Okay, even in death, that's the ultimate not being okay. <laughs> and um, it, because it makes you feel like there's no being left behind, like that you are always home, that you always have been and you always will be, that there's no separation. And this, and the reason I say that this is esoteric, this kind of goes into a little bit of Buddhist um, territory. This goes into the idea of dualism versus non-dualism. And so for, for folks that, you know, might not know what I mean by that is, um, dualism is this, this concept that we have that we are separate from everybody and everything, okay? That we are our own universe and everything else is separate, okay? And therefore, everything could be can be a threat and we need to grab for everything, okay? We don't, like, this this feeling that we don't have a lot within our own selves. Um, and whereas non-dualism is this understanding that we are all part of the same energy, that there is actually no separation. It looks like it, but science will tell you that where it looks like my arm stops and the air begins, there's actually no separation. It's just sort of levels of density of energy. It's one big continuum. And, and yeah, so, I mean, yeah, that's science that we are all part of this, whether you want to call it energy, uh, universe, nature, some people call it God. Okay. That's not what I choose um, to call it, but, um, but it is, it is the everythingness. And, um, and in this sort of way of being, and 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 just so we're clear, I I believe we live in a, a, an existence of both dualism, a degree of dualism, obviously, <laughs> and non-dualism, um, and trying to find the marriage of both of those is kind of where we're heading to, um, and so. Uh, so really, in this this idea of non-dualism, we are just expressions of this nature. Okay, just expressions sort of coming in, coming out, absorbing in, and there is no separation. Ultimately, there is no threat and there is no lacking. Okay, that is an ultimate level of trust. And it is a bit hard one, folks. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Um, sometimes you just naturally have it, but often it is one that needs to be cultivated. And it can be cultivated through all kinds of activities. It can be cultivated through just getting out of your thinking mind and just kind of trying to be more present, you know, feeling the air, hearing the sounds. Um, it can be about, you know, getting out of your accomplishing or your identity in general, um, you know, being outdoors in nature. Uh, meditation is a great way of exploring this level of trust, getting lost in music, 
um, movement, you know, just like letting yourself be absorbed in movement, dance. Um, it can be practicing relaxing and letting go into your body, letting your body just sort of melt. It can be um, visualizations like seeing yourself in as a wave in this never ending ocean. Okay, when I talk about dualism and non-dualism, that's kind of it. You know, we see ourselves as this wave that's separate, but we're just jutting out of the oneness, the universality of everything and coming back in again. Okay, so I find that wave uh, visual, visioning really lovely to remind me. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, love that. Um, uh, other ways um, would be, you know, feeling just sometimes when you're feeling really separate from someone, just closing your eyes for a minute and, and feeling that the same life flowing through you is flowing through them. Okay. Or that, that, you know, example that I just said about like the separation of me from you is, is actually, it's not there. We just meld into each other. So, um, yeah, so again, um, this, you know, you don't even need to know how to name it or explain it, but it is just the feeling of belonging to this larger sense of being, okay? And again, for some, it's uh, Mother Earth energy, for others, it's nature, for some, it's uh, like this loving formlessness, or it's just the all. Um, so I think I'll stop there and explain it because it's better for you to experience it. So, like I said, I, I just listed them from, for me, what I find to be the powerful to the most powerful and also the, uh, the hardest to the most hard. Um, and this list order also reflects, um, the order of that. I feel that a lot of people's trust journey goes on. Um, it's a lot easier to start with the level one of trust. Um, it's, it's tangible, it's there. It's, it's kind of what we've been trained to lean on as far as trust goes, but we can't stop there. We just can't stop there. It's not enough. So, um, let me tell you a little bit about my own story with these levels. So, uh, I, you know, I'm lucky enough that uh, I, I was born into a family um, where I was loved, not to say that there wasn't some, you know, dysfunction, um, but I was loved. I knew I was loved. Okay. There might've been conditions around that love, like with every parent, all of the children, but generally I felt like my parents had my back. That's a very lucky thing. Not a lot of people have that. And so I think that's why my first level of trust was fairly strong. I had sort of a, a fairly, um, you know, I had a lot of confidence that the world was good. Okay. That there were good, that was, there was goodness in people and that there would be um, others that would help me if I was ever in trouble. Um, and so that was sort of my real world safety net, but, you know, whether I was very good at taking them up on it was, is another matter. And that comes, you know, into my, from my other patterns, but that's, that's for another workshop. Um, the, as I mentioned though, my second level of trust, not great, not great. Um, I, uh, like I said, I, I was an overachiever. Um, I had a, a pattern of not, not in, like I had a belief of, that I wasn't good enough. So I was always um, trying to drive myself to do better people, please, you know? And so in that, I, 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 I forgot myself, you know, I really didn't get to know myself as, as well as, as I wish I had earlier. Um, and I certainly wasn't there for myself. I, I, I had to earn every bit of love there was to be earned, uh, to be had. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the third level, this is what was happening. I think I always had a bit of an anchoring in the third level, a bit of, I already always had kind of an intuitive sense of this allness. Um, and when I was about 10, I asked my 
mom to start taking me to church because <laughs> that's the only that's the only form of spirituality we had in small town Manitoba was a Christian church. Um, there weren't even synagogues in Brandon. <laughs> and so Carl knows he's in Brandon right now. Hi, Carl. <laughs> and so um, I, I, I just I, I had a sense that this part of me needed to be cultivated. And that's the only thing I knew. Um, and actually, it was a really good experience for me to cultivate that and, and in the right ways, because I have happened to go to a church that was really, I was really supportive and, and was sort of going in the right direction. However, in grade 12, I took a philosophy course and um, I stopped believing in God. <laughs> and that was a problem because all of a sudden, as much as I wanted to, I just, in I couldn't believe in the same God, that the Christian God that they were, you know, that I, I had to adhere to, to be part of, of, this church that had brought me a lot of trust and a lot of support. Um, so I, I started a few years of wandering, um, you know, just knowing that I, I, that this piece of this, this longing to be connected to this larger sense of being was so big in me. Um, and uh, it was many years of, 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 exploring and searching. Um, Buddhism was a huge influence for me. Um, as you can tell, I, I, I weave it into different things. Um, but so were many other traditions, shamanism, um, a lot of, uh, you know, I, I learned a lot from uh, different practitioners, uh, different philosophers. Uh, and, you know, I eventually sort of came to my own sort of conclusions about what that larger sense of, of uh, being was for me uh, and how it was integrated in me. And that's the thing. I, I, I'm never sort of a, I never really preach to give your power away to something outside of yourself. I believe that this nature is, is, is us. It's part of us. Okay. It's flowing through all of us. And, um, and so, you know, by recognizing it, you're recognizing your own infinite, you know, boundless potential. And so, um, and so, yeah, so, uh, and that's not to say I, that I'm not, I'm always cultivating this piece. I'm always exploring. I don't have it all nailed down. I don't think anybody does. And so ask me again in a month, I'll, I'll have a slightly different version, but the key word here is cultivation. Okay, is having a relationship with it. You don't need to have it nailed down. You don't need to know every detail. You don't even have to have a name for it. It's just something you can cultivate the feeling of. And so we're going to come back to that as well and do a little work around that. So I'm curious right now, just sort of hearing the different levels and hearing about my own journey. Um, I'd love to hear, you can put in the chat, which level it has sort of figured strongest for you in your life to this point and which one has been the most challenging or even non-existent um I'd love to hear and again I'm not I won't use names so don't worry about about it only the folks that are here live know who's saying who's saying what um and as you're doing that um I just sort of want to uh come back to the real world safety net so, okay, Cher is asking, is it possible to repeat the three? Of course, one is real world safety nets, two is self-relationship, and three is connection to universal nature. Okay, so I'm seeing three is the easiest, two is the most difficult, interesting. Two is the hardest for sure. Someone else is saying three, a most grounded, still learning. Two, I am rotten. Yeah, interesting. Interesting. And nobody's mentioned one. One's just that one that's there. It's a little bit steady and maybe not steady enough at times. Uh, okay. Yeah. Level one is most difficult. And that, that often comes up when we have had a traumatic um, beginning um, or traumatic experiences or we're marginalized in a marginalized group. Um, we don't have the privilege of, of, you know, having been shown enough love, um, having enough backup in our life, you know, feeling, seeing enough kindness in the world. So I'm uh, not, uh, first of all, I want, to make it clear that if you have not um, developed, cultivated these levels of trust yet, not your fault, not your fault at all. It just hasn't, you haven't had the opportunity or you weren't taught it in the first place and you haven't had the opportunity to learn yet. So I just want to make that um, clear. 
Yeah. Yeah. The, with the one that says person that said level one, I never had parents or a family in my childhood. Yes. Yeah, so of course, level one is going to be really, really hard. I'm seeing three easiest, one hardest. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Cher's asking, where do they come from? Have you developed them? Yeah, Cher, this is just my, my little sort of, um, uh, my little tool around uh, uh, trust, the trust factor. It, it really came from the sense of, um, I, I know that surrender is one of my biggest lessons that I need to learn in life. And I heard it from all sorts of teachers over the years. You need to surrender, you need to surrender, you know? And I'm like, how the do I surrender when I don't trust that there's anything to catch me? That's ridiculous. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> right so yeah um yeah level one is not steady level two and three are about equal okay well let's dive into some ways to strengthen all of the above folks thank you so much for sharing this and it's fascinating I love to see how different it is for everybody here I am like oh I've done them in order of difficulty no it's for me <laughs> Um, not for everybody. So I will stop saying that now that I, you have informed me of that. Um, okay. And by the, by the way, folks, this is the first time I've taught this in a group. Uh, I teach this a lot in my one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I haven't taught this as a group. So this is really great information for me to sort of see how it lands and, uh, you know, any of the gaps in it. Um, and anything that I don't respond to right now, um, I will, I will try to read it when I have a chance. Um, okay. So, um, let's, let's work a little bit on real world safety nets. Uh, we won't work too long on this because I think they're a little bit more obvious, but again, real world, world safety nets. Um, okay. I want you to take a piece of paper right now. And what we're going to do is we are going to make a list, a list to remind you of all of the things all of the people, all of the strengths that you have to fall back on when things get tough, when you lose your job, or when someone turns on you, or when you're scared, um, you know, to uh, do that thing, or when you feel overwhelmed by a project. Okay, so these are some of the headings that you might put on this piece of paper, just to remind you. Okay, so um, one of them is uh, beings. Okay, so the beings in your life, the 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 humans, non-humans who uh, are you know just make you feel safe, make you feel loved, make you feel cared for, that could you know back you up in harder times. Um, uh, I want you to make a, a, a listing, sorry, a title for societal safety nets. Okay, I like to always recognize that here um, where I am in Canada, we have an incredibly, like we have a democratic society, um, a place that allows us to protest, you know, without getting thrown in jail. I mean, that's huge. That's, that's better than a whole big part of the world. So I, I always have to remind myself of that. Um, but also, you know, safety nets within your, you know, your government. Um, you know, if, if you were ever really broke, maybe there are safety nets that that would support you. Again, in Canada, not generous enough. We need more as far as the safety nets go, but there is something. Um, the um, other heading that I want you to put is strengths. Okay, the strengths that you can fall back on, your own strengths, okay? What are the things that, you know, make you resilient, okay? What are the things that you can pull out as a superpower when things go south? And the last label the title I want you to put is times you've persevered in the face of great challenge. Okay. Times that you have persevered and basically any hard thing that's happened, you persevered for you, you survived. Okay. So you can list any hard things that you've done and that you've gotten through. Okay. So those are the different, uh, those are the different sections. And I want you to just, we're, we're going to just take a few minutes, maybe three minutes, and I'm just going to get you to get started. Okay. Get you to start writing in those, you know, those different categories. Yes. Yeah, safety nets now, um, share. So this is the level one, um, real world safety nets. I'm going to list them again here in the chat, um, some of the sections, just so that you can remember. Okay. <laughs> Sherry says, sorry, just on coffee one. It's first thing in the morning for you, sweetie. I'm just so impressed you're here.
Richard, I'm just so you know, I'm following you on my on my chat here. I'm seeing it. So thank you. And if you're having trouble with one section, go to another one, jump around. And if anybody's having trouble with um, a section and they want some more ideas, just put it in the chat and I'll, I'll name a few more ideas for that one. Yeah, so Cheryl's asking about societal. So yeah, so Cheryl, societal would be um, things like I mentioned, uh, the you know, what are the safety nets in your uh, country, in your community, um, in your, uh, you know, like, uh, again, actual safety nets within society to be able to call on. Um, but it, it doesn't just have to be that it, it can also be societal in like, um, you know, do you have a big social circle or do you have powerful friends that you can sort of call on? Um, are there books, um, podcasts, films that, um, give you a sense of, you know, trust of, of, of courage? Um, what in our society gives you courage? What makes you feel empowered, trustful. Yeah, so, so there's a comment that um, with external supports, even when they are present, there's fear someday they won't be in the context of aging and disability. And that's why we need to go beyond the first level. Thank you for that comment. It's a good thing to be able to talk about. So for me, my societal strengths, uh, you know, I mentioned uh, democracy, but I, I, I mean, I have a really great community of um, change makers that really understand where I'm coming from. Um, I, uh, let's see, uh, some other pieces. Um, I, I have um, some teachers that I, I follow and connect with that, that really bring me a sense of soothing and trust. Uh, I guess that could go under beings as well. Um, I always have, um, I always have a book or a podcast that in, you know, emboldens me or, or, you know, sort of creates a, uh, some trust in me on the go. Um, you know, things like that. Okay, folks, let's wrap that up. And, and this is, should just be the beginning. Okay. I want you to kind of keep thinking and adding to this list. And I want you to have this list like somewhere that you can go back to it. Okay. In times of trouble, I want you to go back and to, you know, be able to look at those times that you 
you know, thought you were done for and you managed to rise up. In fact, I want you to share one, folks. In that list, is there is there one that came up that you can, you know, say in a few words, um, you know, a situation where you thought something was insurmountable, um, but you were able to, you know, to handle it? I just, I always like to see those. Okay, but we should keep trucking because we are running short on time. Okay. I want to work now a little bit. I want to show you a couple of tools around um, cultivating that relationship with self. Now, this is this is a whole journey in itself. Um, I mean, this is something I could give you 101 tools for this, but I'm going to give you a couple that I think are 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 pretty strong um, that you can use on a regular basis. So, once again, uh, I mentioned that. The this level of trust requires self exploration, self appreciation, um, self love, self care, um, and so uh, we're going to work on a tool that combines self exploration and self love. So what I'd like for you to do right now is I want you to just close your eyes or cast your gaze downward, and um, I want you to go back to that that fear or that risk, that thing that you don't feel like you ha have had the degree of trust in order to do, that, that fear that you've had that you, we talked about at the beginning. I got you to choose one. Choose a, a hard thing, something that's got you stuck because the courage isn't there. Okay, and I want you to really make this real. I want you to really sort of pull this up in the movie of your mind. And I want you to see yourself in a situation where you're sort of facing this. You're facing this, this fear. You're in it. And let's make it as real as possible. Okay, notice where you are. Notice who's there. Notice what you're doing. You might even notice what you're wearing, noticing how you're holding yourself, the expression on your face. Things are sort of unfolding. But most importantly, I want you to notice where in your body you're feeling this, this fear this hesitance, this stuckness. You know, it could be anywhere. It could be in your heart. It could be in your throat. It could be up in your head. It could be in your belly or your upper stomach. Just notice where that sensation of discomfort most is right now as you're thinking about this. And if it's possible and comfortable enough, bringing a hand or your hands to that place and just and just sort of holding that place with your hands. And holding it with just this sense of, mm, love you. And really breathing into that feeling, just really exploring it. Oh my gosh, what is it? Is it, is it fiery? Is it aching? Is it frenetic? Is it hard? Is it deflated? Is it hurting? Just notice. And within this place, there's a part of your being residing, a really vulnerable part of your being, a part that feels a little small and confused and very scared. First of all, I just want you to see if you can feel a little tenderness for this part of you. This little, little wee confused part of you. This aching part of you. Or this shivering part of you. You're like a little scared animal. And I want you to breathe into that. Just sort of breathe into that part of you. And then I just want you to ask this part of you, what are you most scared of? 
What are you believing about yourself or the world? It's got you stuck and scared you. And listen, and that answer may come in the form of words, or it may just be a feeling, it might be an image. But what, what's this little part trying to tell you? What's really going on here? What's their hurt? What's their fear? No breathing some deeper, bigger breaths. And just seeing if you can find a way to comfort this part of yourself. This little, you know, you might see them as, a, like I said, this little scared animal or this little, little child. Do they need warmth? Do they need you to hold them up high? Do they need you to protect them? I'm the mama bear for them. Do they need you to just rock them and give them some quiet? Do they need you to say, no matter what happens, I'll be here for you. This is what I need to hear. And no, don't just say it to them. I also want you to just surround them with this energy. Whatever the energy is they most need. Soothing or, you know, your power behind them or freedom. Infuse that into this place with your breath. Breathe that feeling into this place. A beautiful deep breath into that. And on the exhale, just shaking it into that place a little bit more. Shaking it, shaking it, shaking it, shaking it. And coming back to opposite. Mm. So I'd love to know how that felt if you want to share in the chat. So, you know, if you were right here, I'd be like, how's everybody doing? Um, and get you to tell me. But I just, yeah, if you want to share or or I'd love to hear what it was that that part most needed from you. The feeling or the words it most needed from you. I always find hearing how we are there for ourselves from other people can be so healing. Yeah. Mm, to hear, someone said to hear, everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. Gosh, so obvious. But we don't do that to ourselves. We don't say, honey, it's going to be okay. I got you. Yeah. Um, the, the, vo the voice said, I, I want to protect animals like I was not protected. Mm. Yeah. And so in that moment... You may really want to, you know, the answer to, to what to do with that, because there's so much fear, right? There's so much fear around what's happening right now. And you know why, why they're, the stakes are so high. And so maybe you need to really hold that place and just say, for, for right now, just let me protect you. Okay. Just take a load off. Just let yourself be held just for now, because it's really hard to build strength up when we're in a constant state of guilt, of panic. So sometimes we just need to hold ourselves. Um, another another folk, person said that it's okay to feel confident. And yes, that it's like you might have to tell that little one, it's okay for you to kick ass. It's okay for you to kick ass and take names, you know? Like that's okay for you to be strong, for you to power, be powerful, for you to roar. Sometimes that's what that little one needs to hear. Um, someone else said there are people to draw on who will be helpful. 
my real fear and procrastination of giving an elephant presentation. Okay, there are people to draw on who will be helpful. And another thing you might want to tell that little being is everybody loves animals. They might not know how to express that in the right way in this world, but they're going to be on your side. Everybody wants to see animals do well. You know, and so and so tr a little bit more trust in in that in the goodness of of the people that are going to be um, hearing your words. Okay, that they that there is some love in their hearts. Okay, amazing, love it. Thank you so much. Okay, so this exercise I made it longer, but it can be really short. Okay, this exercise could be as quick as you you know just sort of finding where in your body that you are most uncomfortable and just saying, sweetie, what do you need right now? What do you need right now? Okay. And the answer might just be, I need a really big, long breath, or I need to, um, I, I need to just, you know, call a friend or I need to, um, I need to scream. Okay. So just, what do you need right now? find it in your body. What do you need right now? Another really good piece. Um, here's another little exercise. We don't have time to do it right now, but I'm going to explain it to you. And I call it the pain self expansive self dialogue. And so this is how it works. You take about three to five minutes to just kind of go into that place, that vulnerable place. Okay. And, and to just feel into it and you grab a pen and you start writing from it. Okay. All the, the fears, all of the worries, all of the stuff they're carrying, all of the, the, the uh, beliefs that they're holding, all the stories that you're telling yourself and just write it all out, write it out in that childlike form, in that vulnerable, you know, confused form, write it out, just get it all out onto the piece of paper. And then put that pen down and breathe into something, a deeper part of yourself, okay? Breathe into um, maybe the wiser part of yourself or the more loving part of yourself or the more expansive part of yourself. And pick up that pen and then write back to that part. And just see, just see what comes out. It's amazing. This, this exercise, especially when you do it more often and get used to it, this exercise, the wisdom that will come out of you, the courage that will come out of you, the problem solving that will come out of you, the ability to be able to soothe yourself is incredible, okay? And, and you don't need to like go into it with the, well, I'm going to give you all the answers. Just feel into that vulnerable part and with that tenderness and that love right back and see what comes out, okay? I'd love for you to try this tonight or tomorrow morning. Maybe make a note to yourself to try it just to see. Mm, Andy said it was really good. The pit of my stomach. Yeah. Okay. It really, it really hit something. Okay. Thank you for that. That was, um, that's a vulnerable exercise to do. So I'm, I'm, I really just want to salute you for going there folks. And if you weren't quite able to go there, don't worry about it. It was the first time. Just keep trying it. Okay. The last piece as I mentioned, when I was talking about this third level of trust, this connection belonging to universal nature, you know, I talked about all of the different things you can do to cultivate that, you know, time outdoors in nature, um, music can do it, movement can do it, um, uh, visualizations, meditations, creativity can connect you to that larger sense of being. Um, but I want to take you through just a little visualization right now that, you know, I want to sort of place in your hands that you could use um, that might help. And so I'm going to get you once again to close your eyes or cast your gaze down, whichever feels better for you. And let's just start with a nice, big, expansive breath. And once again, I know this feels a bit counterintuitive because we we just got got a little place, got a little further down the road with it. But I'm going to get you to bring up this situation where you're feeling fearful one more time. I'm going to get you to feel yourself in this situation one more time. Again, where are you? Feel the way you're holding your body 
and expression on your face. Feel where this is in your body. What's unfolding or what you're imagining unfolding. And then no matter where you are, no matter what's happening, I want you to feel the roof or the lid just fly off of this place. I want you to feel, if there's walls, I want you to feel the walls collapse. And I want you to feel the ground sort of rise up to take over any flooring. And I want you to find yourself with your feet firmly on the earth. And then I want you to feel yourself breathing and feeling the earth. I want you to really feel the earth beneath you. I want you to feel how Mother Earth holds you close to her with gravity. She's not letting you go. She's got you. She's holding you. This whole earth from where you came beneath you, supporting you feeling the vibrations of the earth beneath you, always holding you close to it. And then I want you to look now up at this big boundless sky, open, free, spacious. I want you to feel yourself as part of this sky, free and boundless. And now I want you to feel what's beyond. I want you to feel this never ending space, this all beingness. And I want you to feel the boundless ocean. And as yourself, as a wave, just dipping in coming, rising out of this ocean and dissolving into the allness. I want you now to feel like the edges of your shoulders and your arms just starting to dissolve. And this is a great thing. This is you sort of communing, communing with your larger being. Just feeling sort of the edges of your body starting to dissolve. So it's kind of hard for you to feel where you begin and end and where the air begins and ends. And feeling that at the top of your head, feeling the dissolving of this crown of the head that keeps your thoughts in this little compartment, freeing up your knowing, dissolving the top of your head and feeling your consciousness, your knowing, free to be everywhere. Free to be in every animal, including humans. Free to be in every tree, in every blade of grass, in every drop of water, in every spark of fire, in every star, and in the wind. And just seeing if you could melt into that seeing if you could just soften and relax into the true nature, your larger true nature. And let's take one more big grounding breath into that. And letting go with a big exhale. And when you're ready, coming back to eyes open. Mm.
this one, this one can be a little harder just because you need to find your own ways of communing with it. I try to give you lots of different examples, okay? Like often when I'm feeling a sense of fear and separateness and trappedness, I really I feel my feet on the earth. Sometimes I lie on the earth, stomach to the earth. Best way to feel your larger belonging. But sometimes I just feel that earth. Uh, sometimes I look up the big, big sky. Sometimes I feel like the trees are holding me. Sometimes I feel everything dissolving. Sometimes I feel like I am just, you know, sort of melting into the allness. So I get, uh, sometimes I feel like I'm the ocean. Okay. So I just gave you lots of different examples. Take note if anything really resonated. And I'd love to hear it. Did something in particular resonate? You know, share it in the chat. What resonated particularly for you? Um, but if something resonated, this is what you kind of need to return to again and again and again, especially in times of sort of a little, you know, just don't start with a big fear, start with a little fear, start with a little tinge of anxiety. Okay. Let me just look at that big open sky outside my window. And let me breathe, just breathe into that. Okay. Let me just go outside and take a few steps in the grass and bare feet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing grounding ourselves on the ground. Yeah. That really worked for you. Love it. Um, I love the idea of human constructs just being blown away. Yes. The, the, the roof coming off, the walls coming off. Yes. When you are working with those judges and those lawyers, I want you to feel like mother earth is everywhere. The animals are skipping after you. I don't want you to feel the stuffy courthouse you're in or a classroom or whatever. <laughs> Blow that all away. Yeah. Um, surrounded by nature is good. Bird song, wind, face plant in the snow. That is beautiful. Yes. Your allness. Um, I'm going to give you one more, uh, one more little tip. Again, med there's so many ways to cultivate this. Meditation is one of them. And I'll just let you know, um, on my website, I have a page of meditations. Uh, I, I'm going to be adding more to them. I keep meaning I have hundreds of meditations that I've done. Um, and they have little descriptions and they're really great to be able to just go and get a you know, 10 minute meditation. I think I have some five minuters there. I have some longer ones at 15 minutes. Um, <clears throat> I'll get Kirsten to share that with you when she has a chance in the chat. Um, and, uh, but it's Kimberly Carroll, uh, back, oh, she's backslash meditations. Um, KimberlyCarroll.com backslash meditation. So that's a really great thing to experiment with. Um, and um, this is a, a piece that I'm working on right now that I'm kind of excited about. So when I sort of stopped being a, a, a Christian, I sort of had a little bit of a thing around prayer. I was like, oh, I'm not going to pray to a big guy in the sky or whatever like that. Um, but um, one of my teachers, Tara Brock, has... Uh, was talking oh, a while ago about the idea of, of reclaiming prayer of of it just being you communing with that larger part of your being so but just speaking it okay so just being able to um when we speak um what it is that we're longing for what it is that we're scared of it makes it more tangible it makes it more alive it it makes it more able for our system to rise up to try to meet it to heal it um when we communicate, um, we connect, you know, to our vulnerability, um, to our, to another, to a larger nature. Um, and so, so that idea of communicating with this larger being of yourself can be wonderful. And it can just, it can just sound like sometimes I can, sometimes for me, it's just like, please help me. Just please help me. And again, I'm not saying that to anyone outside of myself. I'm saying that to the allness I belong to. I'm I, I'm not just this this one individual, Kimberly. I am I am the sky and the earth and the fire and the ocean. Please help me. Okay. Sometimes just voicing that is really helpful. Um. And and so or or um, yeah. It, it, some uh one that Tara talks about is please love. Me. Please love me. 
Okay. But anyway, just, just that idea of being able to speak out loud, you know, what we need, what we would, you know, what we need help with can be a really wonderful way again, to, to get clear about it and, and to invite our own resources to rise up to meet that. Okay. Um, and, and also it just reminds you that you don't have to hold everything on your own shoulders. You're just one little wee expression of this universal nature. It doesn't have to be just you. Okay. Um, I'm going to just read a couple more because I love these, um, of, of some of the, uh, ways of cultivating that third level of trust. Uh, someone said lying on the ground, looking at the night sky. Hmm. And, and yeah, you like the wave visualization wonderful I love that um capturing time lapses of the sky uh cloud formation northern lights thunderstorms yes Carl um if if anybody likes the idea of that Carl um uh, just look for Carl Wilding um he uh does time lapses that he shares on social media and they're beautiful they're a meditation in them in themselves Carl you're on um Facebook and Instagram right yeah, I just recently rejoined uh, Instagram, also on TikTok too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get I get better responses on TikTok actually, so that's where I concentrate, where I put my videos on more, or I, I evenly with Instagram and sharing it to Facebook too. So yeah. yeah so but if you're in, you're in, and it's under your name, right, Carl? Yeah. Um, my name. Yeah, I think my handle is is the same on. Um, on Instagram and uh, TikTok, Facebook. Yeah. Okay, great, yeah. awesome. Um, okay, so folks, I have taken, you know what, I think I should just say that these are gonna be seven to eight thirty because we. when have I ended on time ever? Uh, <laughs> thank you for staying with me though, I really appreciate it. Um, so I would like to know, since we're such a small group today, um, I would love for you to say in the chat or, or out loud, um, what what you're going to work on like one thing that you're going to work on cultivating um, whether it's finishing your list from the first level of trust whether it's going to be trying that um, pain self expansive self dialogue the writing exercise whether it's going to be checking into just say what is that you need right now whether it's going to be doing something on the universal level of trust um, I'd love for you to put those that in the chat um, does anybody have any questions before we go tonight I know that I kind of, uh, you know, like this is a big topic and I, and, and I just sort of gave you a little taste of it, but I hope it's enough for you to kind of take the ball and run with it. Kimberly. Yes, Rosemary. I created a template based on what I understood you were saying for that, the written exercise. So yes. if anybody wanted, uh, I can, Ooh. I can email it to you. Why don't you email it to me, Rosemary? And then, um, um, I will, I'll send it out with, um, the, uh, the, the replay. Yeah. I had one, two, three, four, five. I have six columns. The first column I had themes, then pers the second one I had persons, the third one, societal safety net, uh, democratic society, yeah. uh, uh, followed by safety net, uh, strength. The next one was, um, strength. So it makes your resilient when you can um pull in resources from your hat excellent darling you just send it to me and then i and i will i will i will distribute it okay okay i just wanted to make sure i got amazing it. i love it um thank you rosemary and and i'm seeing rosemary says she's gonna do the writing exercise i love that um uh Let's see, um, uh, Tenebrae is going to connect with nature. Yes, yes, Tenebrae, do it. Um, uh, Geraldine says, I'm inspired to do all three of the exercises. Um, Kirsten says, I, I love the second visualization. Um, so going to you know work with that. Excellent. Um, Andy's going to do the writing exercise. Uh, oh, yes, this is so great. Uh, what, KG, what does this mean? What is... W I I Y N F M mean. What is it you need from me? Oh, that acronym. Love it. <laughs> I knew you had something clever there. I was just like, what's it going to be? Love it. Thank you. Um, uh, let's see. Move from scarcity mindset to one of abundance. 
Um, and Andy said, do you meet regularly from what you've just said? Yes, Andy, we, I try to do the change maker sessions. Well, I was trying to do it one, uh, twice a month, but I'm kind of down to once a month. And if you're on my list, which I think you are now, you'll get notices of the next one. The next one will be in July. Okay. And I'm also asking for input as to some of the next um, topics in the, in the new Changemaker sessions in September. So if you have some ideas, feel free to drop me a line. All right. Take yourself off of your mute because I'd like to hear your voices. How y'all doing? How you, are you doing okay? That yeah. was a lot to take in. Not okay. too bad, yeah. Okay, okay, good, good. Um, so yeah. thank you so much for being here with, with us tonight, everybody. It was really wonderful working with you. It was really nice to have this nice little intimate group. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Wishing you, thank you Kimberly. a wonderful rest thank of your you, night, Kimberly. everybody. You take care, okay? Thank, thank you, you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.